Hey, it's Lee. Welcome to Business Problem Solved. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of chatting with a young gentleman who I have recently been connected to. Uh, he actually calls himself the funniest lean guy. So that that frustrated me at the start when I first read it. I've got over it now because I thought I was the funniest lean guy, but no, I'm not. I'm So I'm the second funniest lean guy talking to the funniest lean guy. How are you, Jake? Great. Doesn't the title just scream, me, me? <laughs> it, does, it does, yeah. Which is why I don't mind giving up the title to you, to you. <laughs> so it, it's all yours. It is all yours. Um, so welcome, Jake. If, for those people who don't know who Jake is, who is Jake? And how has he got to sit in front of that jukebox today? I mean, that doesn't work on audio, does it? So you sat in front of a jukebox, sat in a chair. So who are you? And how have you got to that seat? Well, uh it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun story, actually. Well, I've been in like le various leadership roles in the great state of Texas in manufacturing distribution environments, and just about every time I try to find a mode of connecting with people, of getting them all on the same page, to try to do the same thing. Like the personality that just comes naturally to me worked really well, and that's making it as seductive and simple as possible. I found that like, and I'm naked below the camera here from the waist down, just so you're aware. But I found that if you're sufficiently seductive, and why I keep using the word, and that's going to be the word of the day, you don't have to ask people to change. If you're off in the club and you're dancing and you're wearing all your makeup and you're sufficiently seductive, people will come to you. They will literally crawl out of the woodwork to, to change and exhibit the behaviors that you want. So all I'm doing is shifting that around like, the process of continuous improvement. And as far as a brand, in 2020, I worked for this lovely job that shall not be named that literally told me they were paying me to do nothing. They said, we don't want you to respond to an email, interact with an employee, just sit in a corner and collect a paycheck. I'm like, well, you don't know Jake. Like I am fundamentally incapable of that. And in my previous lives, I was already like on Facebook and on Reddit, just blowing up like offensive memes that have no business making it out into the world. And I thought, well, why don't I just start the LinkedIn and see if I can pretty it up just enough to be socially acceptable. Uh, move, my, move my meme game from today to about six months old, because that's how LinkedIn is, they're that far behind. And just have some fun with it. And it has just been a glorious ride ever since. Amazing, I love that. And you've used the word seductive a number of times. Um, have you always been seductive? That's a great question. So I think the, the fun beginning part for me was I, I started in hospitality right in high school. And I was just the guy when you walked into the hotel. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you, Lee? And just, you know, I was just the guy that's supposed to sell you a room, right? Yeah. And a lot of what worked and what didn't, I just kept ever since. And those skills have been far more important than anything I learned in the manufacturing world. Wow. Okay. So, um, and, and I can't believe we're talking about this, but um, what is Jake's um, rules of seductivity? Ooh, Jake's rules. Well, I'm glad because I'm going to go over with you right now, but you can also find them when you click on my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> As you mentioned prior to hitting the record button, I'm on LinkedIn like 25-7. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a LinkedIn Live. There's, you know, the videos we do. We do our own podcast, a quality podcast with John Thacker. Definitely check that out. I got to get my card on the video here. Oh, yeah, there you go. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's not quite as good as this podcast, but it's still a quality podcast. It's a quality podcast, isn't it? This is just an average podcast. So it's, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you've trumped me there, if I'm honest. So go on. So <laughs> what, is, what is seductive to Jerk? Uh, well, first off, I got to want to solve the problem more than anyone else in the room. Having that passion, that vigor, that grit when you walk in immediately engages people. If I walk in and go, you all suck... How are we going to get better? Well, you guys know that you're not doing the best that you can right now. That just sucks, right? <laughs> like, that just absolutely sucks. But, like, the animation, the attitude I can bring, uh, make it fun where it's not personal to the individual, and then just, let's get after it. And, like, people are engaged. People want to react to that. People usually open up and they just become who they are as soon as we have the conversation. 
Yeah, I think that's really important, actually. So there's um, there's a guy in this country called Steve McDermott, I think it is, who said uh, the first four minutes of every meeting set the tone for the remaining part of the meeting. And there's probably other people who've got whether it's one minute, three minutes, two minutes, 30 seconds. Um, and, and what you've just said there is, is kind of it, that, um, that how we start sets the tone for, for, for the rest of the stuff that happens. And I've, I've attended so many sessions where, where it has been so downbeat, um, quiet, uh, people have like the, the open it up with what's not working and what's broken and, and just get everybody all negative. But I think just setting the tone and, and being seductive right from the off, I think is a, uh, is, is a, is a great, great tactic. Um, so you mentioned in the last two years that LinkedIn has been your thing mm -hmm. and you've been growing um, you're following significantly. You are everywhere on the, you're talking to some big players, um, some of which have been on, on this podcast. And how, what I don't, in fact, I mean, let me ask a question rather than me just talk at you. At what point did you decide to start collaborating with people? And, and part two, why don't more people collaborate well, you know, that's a that's a deep question I've spent a lot of time thinking about because this industry kind of sucks at it. Everybody's like, can all the meat you can and then sit on the jar. <laughs> you know, yeah. well, they, they don't want to work because, you know, the consulting game is you can take my business, like basically in a nutshell. So they don't have this growth mindset that's literally beaten into us from every lean philosophy known to man and instead want to just shine for themselves. Well, so I just decided I want to start a business model that just goes after the exact opposite. All I want is for Lee Houghton, Houghton, Hoogieton, uh, Houghton. <laughs> All I want is for him to be successful. If I yeah. want that more than I want it for myself, people are going to come to me for collaboration, not the other way around. That's, that's a favorite. Um, that's my favorite pronunciation of my surname ever. So thank you, thank you very much for that. That, that might just be my new ringtone. Uh, I might just say that little excerpt just for, for my ringtone. Um, yeah, can, so I, can I put that on the LinkedIn audio? You know, you have that name pronunciation section. Oh, have yes. Seen that? That, yes. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. should do that for that. Yeah. No, that... Hoofton. Hoof, <laughs> Yeah, I might just do that. Yeah, I might. We might set up, set up a separate recording, and I might just have you say all the different pronunciations you can think of for my surname for that part of it. I'd love that. Absolutely love that. So, do you, but you not do you not think every sector and every kind of um, not sector, but every like um, career is a, is a bit like that. So, all accountants don't like working with other accountants. All um, estate agents will work because it's it's competitive. Yeah, I think the, the nature of capitalism lends itself to that, right? Where unless you're in a very successful position, your nature is, I have to take the biggest slice of my pie I can. Yeah. So why do you think that this is going to make you more successful? The strategy that you've taken? Who the hell knows if it is? Yeah. <laughs> It'll be really funny if I did all this and have a million followers. Like, what do you do for a living? I'm homeless. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually do it for me to be successful. I do it because I get to be the same guy on camera I am in the rest of my life. And instead yeah. of three people sitting in a room around me, I can get thousands to sit in a room around me and engage and have real relationships and a good time. Like, it's just been why I wake up in the morning. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. I, I, I fully resonate with with what you say and why you why you do that as well. Because I think that... There's so many organizations, businesses, teams, that, and there's not enough people who work in change to help all of those people. So why wouldn't we all work together? Even if we were selling the exact same product in the exact same market, we still wouldn't actually be competing against each other. Like yeah. at all, at all. In you think the guy that's going to consider the young kid from Texas in Texas gives a hot damn about... One guy in UK doing the same thing? No, no. Agree. <laughs> not not at all. Not at all. It's yeah. never going to be the case. It's not. We're never it, even going to talk to the same people at the same time inadvertently. It will never happen. Yeah, completely, completely. And we were talking just before I hit record that I had the strangest moment this week in a in a client meeting, watching videos of myself naked in the bath with a prospective client. And I am for some people, but I'm not for other people. And and I think it's just this. 
this Jakey's Jake and he's authentically Jake in every single um, interaction he has. I think that's so important. And a lot of people, they put on this professional persona um, and, and trying to be somebody that they may not be. I remember uh, probably about 16 years ago, so you were probably in nappies at the time, um, or diapers, you would say, wouldn't you? You would say, yeah, I didn't know what a nappy was. Yeah, yeah. Am I rolled up in a napkin. Yeah, 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 diapers. So you would, you would have been in a diaper 16 years ago. I remember um, being told by a consultant that I needed to smarten my act, get better shoes, stop wearing jumpers, um, sweat, uh, sweaters, and stuff, and, and start wearing shirts to actually make it as a consultant, um, because that's what he perceived was the, 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 the successful thing that a consultant needs to do. Um, but it's not, or it might have been then, but I don't believe it is now. I think it's a, it's all about collaboration now and, and, and being seductive with, with everybody. Um, so, Jake, what's the dream? Um, the dream is to do exactly what I'm doing more often all the time. Like, yeah. I'm sort of in this... It's going to be this weirdly cliche, unbelievable, flattery moment, but I'm sort of living the dream right now. Like, I haven't made any plans that are larger than what I'm actually living up to so far. So it's kind of just great to wake up in the morning. Have you received any um, negativity, any challenge, any, um, yeah, have you, have you for, for what you're doing and why you're doing it? Oh no, it's been nothing but sunshine and rainbows. Absolutely. From like from every plastic e suit guy ever just wants to F, just be incredibly offended. You know, I wrote a book in mid-2020 called Chasing Excellence. And it's just here's real problems people face. Here's how to actually solve those problems. Here's a structure to problem solving. If you don't ever want to call me into a place, don't call me in a place. Read the damn book, go on with your life. But there's a chapter in there that's got aliens in it. And some straight-laced business folks, <laughs> they're not up for that <laughs> at all in the slightest. And I get I get some hate mail like, this is just not continuous improvement. It's not. I'm like, well, newsflash, buddy, you don't get to choose what is and isn't <laughs> continuous improvement, right? <laughs> you don't have that option. And so the people that can abstract, have a good time with life, they love it. It's the most meaningful chapter. It's about not having all the answers. So in the scenario, I plopped a politician, I dropped him on a planet. The planet has giraffe people and they have crab people that hate each other. And they have a problem with gravity changing daily and lemons floating up on the shores of their oceans. And you're the politician that has to solve it. And it's like, well, holy shit, I don't even know where to start with that because you know that it's not a problem that exists in our reality. But then I walk through, here's a pragmatic way to solve that problem and what the politician could do given their experiences and background and applying it. And so if you can abstract, you love it. If you don't, you're like, this idiot, why did I just buy this? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Have you always been creative? Um, Hmm. Well, in fact, actually, do, you, do you see yourself as creative first? Yeah, that, a that's question. the question number one. No, I think I see myself as too dumb to get it wrong most of the time. I don't, I don't pick myself out as a creative. I think that the barrier of where people choose to be safe, I think I don't have that. I think yes. that's, the, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, you've pushed, you've pushed that boundary, haven't you? And what's, what's normal for you may not be normal for other people. We've all got our own individual boundaries. And what is it that, that makes your boundaries a little wider than other people's boundaries? That, that's, an, that's an excellent question. I think it's a series of decisions. So trying to circus 2013, 2014. I'm married right out of high school. If you had asked me at any point if I would stay married to that woman the rest of my life, I would have told you yes. But uh, unfortunately, life didn't go that same direction. And when she left, I then married the job. I'm like, what's the safest thing I could do at the job? And was falling into that same life that I see so many other people in. The safest, most pragmatic thing I can do with myself. And then I got a call for a job, just slightly more money, not anything crazy, to move from my middle of nowhere town to like the heart of Dallas. And I was like, struggled with it for days because I loved my job. I loved the people. But at the same time, like, was I going to be in this little town my whole life? Or am I going to do something crazy? And I made the decision to pop out to Dallas. And it was the best decision I could have possibly made. Sold my house, sold my three-bedroom house to pay twice as much money for a studio apartment in the center of town. And 
it was, it really worked out for me. It continued to pay dividends. So then again, about three years into that, um, some other opportunities came up and it was like, leave something, the best thing that's ever happened for you for better opportunity. And a lot faster now, instead of being stuck thinking about it, I'm like, well, if the math's right, I don't care how risky it is, pull the trigger, man, pull the yep. damn trigger. And now I've come to realize that the more risks I take, the more rewards I reap again and again and again and again and again. Like the coolest thing is like on LinkedIn, I get to be myself at work. I get to be myself like in life. It's just me being me. How awesome is that? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. No, I love that. I love that. If you could summarize your life so far, how would you summarize it? Hmm. 18 years of sadness followed by 12 years of figuring out how the hell to be a person summarizing in 2022, which I get to be that person. Oh, wow. Quite deep. Oh, yeah, could quite, potentially quite deep be. at all. You could some from a guy that, you know, doesn't have parents or brother, sister in his life. And it's kind of rough start. If you would have met me when we were like, when we were like 16, I was a typical angsty child. Wouldn't talk to anybody. Hated my school life, hated my home life, hated life like all together. And it's a great story, actually. When I graduated, I went to work for a very small grocery store. I love it. Hashtag David Supermarket. We love you. Uh, <laughs> middle of nowhere place, Italy, Texas. And my job was to like face the milks and the items and bring stuff out, right, for a grocery store. And one of my jobs had these gigantic racks of milk with like 500 gallons of milk on it and roll it out and then, you know, face all the stuff so the freshest milk's in the back, the oldest is in the front, et cetera. And I hit a pothole and like 300 gallons of milk tipped over, <laughs> destroyed this whole grocery store. I'm like from the knee down, like covered in milk. And I was about to cry, scream, throw the milk, cuss at somebody. And instead I thought, weirdly in that moment, Jake is literally gonna cry over spilled milk. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> And all of my struggles and stuff I just hate are behind me now. Like they're just literally behind me. I don't have to let how my parents were and how school was define the rest of my life. I get to pick that. And so I started this philosophy of one, I'm going to laugh first, but two, I'm going to take the things I like from all the people I meet and apply them because I didn't like who I was. And I progressively do that. Like I meet Lee and I'm like, Man, that is a charming, that is a charming British chap if I ever met one. And I'm just going to take the, the one thing I like about you thus far is you will intently listen. And before you even say anything, you're already smiling at it. So I can tell like you're emotive enough to, you're engaging visually, which is a, a already something seductive. It's a seductive trait. And I like to observe people, take what I like about them and apply it forever. And I think that's what's made me who I am today. Wow. Wow. Thank, thank you for that. I think that, that there's, there's, there's so many angles that we could, and, and so many things that we could, we could talk about. And you've been on quite a, as you've just said, it's quite a journey that you have, that you've been on throughout, throughout your life to, to, to be Jake and come to be Jake, being comfortable with being Jake. Um, in fact, actually, that, that's an assumption I've made. Uh, at what point did you become comfortable being Jack? I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So have you always wanted, have you always tried to get better doing what you do? Because it, 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 what you're talking about and pushing the boundaries and that conversation and, and when you outlined your, your life and, and stuff, it's, you have had a life of, 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 of pushing the boundaries and trying to get better. Is that something that's within you or something that you've learned? I, I think actually initially my goals were kind of small and that was get a job and get out of my crappy small town, right? It took me long enough to do. If you live in a town that's more than 10 miles from a gas station or a job, essentially what happens is you're too poor to get a car and you need a car to get work because there's no public transportation here, like just, just none. So you get in, in that trapped vicious circle. So it wasn't like 19 or 20 to like my actual life started for me and like I could actually get out into the world and the only thing I ever committed to myself was I'm never going to go back so uh, I was working at a hotel I worked there for six years and I loved loved every second of it and I got the opportunity to take another job moving from like eight dollars an hour to like ten dollars an hour 
uh, in a manufacturing facility as an HR, like entry level HR clerk. And when I started there, at first it was to leave the hotel and I decided instead, I'm gonna keep both jobs because one's overnight, one's days until one of them pays off for me. And I'm gonna pour all my heart and soul into like trying to make management in one or the other. And what I found was like, not intentionally, but just due to the nature of the business I was in, I found myself doing two totally polar opposite things. At night, the thing they wanted to see in managers was like charm, uh, engagement with customers, well-spoken, articulated. And in the other job, they really, it was really a cutthroat performance-based world where they expected you to know more, expected you to do more, learn several complex systems, um, have an answer for stuff nobody else has an answer to. So I was getting more and more like straight-laced businessman cutthroat in the day. And then more and more like the guy I am today at night. And one day out of the blue, they switched management at this day job. And I thought, I'm going to try to just be both of these guys instead of two of them separately. Yeah. Um, it immediately paid off. Like inside of 30 days, they were like, well, here's your first managerial role. And Boom, Jake was to the moon. Yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing. So you share a lot of content. You talk to a lot of people. Um, you're quite, you're, you're out there with your, in your uh, publishing a lot of stuff. You've written a book. What do you hope that people learn from you? Uh, just to remove that, that barrier of yourself holding you back. If there's something dumb you want to get out there and do, do it. Just do it. Even if it's wrong, even if it's dumb, even if it cost you money and didn't have any ROI, just do it. And I make it this, uh, I tell, try to put this visual in their head. Have you ever played Monopoly League? Yes. So imagine if you go around the board, but your only rule is you can't spend money on things. How good of a time would you have with that game? How successful would you be? What are your odds of winning that game versus other people? Yeah, not, not very good. So stop this. I'm going to waste money and it's not going to be successful. Stop that. I'm not going to try my dreams because it might not be fruitful. And just try a lot of stuff. Eventually something will work and just pour your heart into that if it makes you happy and makes you wake up in the morning looking forward to it. So that's coming from a place where you have you have done that. Um, and and you, you mentioned earlier on that you you've the bigger the risk, the greater the reward. And, and you've constantly pushed those boundaries to see what is achievable. Have you ever not done that and regretted not doing that? Or, and, stroke, or, what do you think stops people from doing that? Well, I'll give you a funny one that worked out really well, and then I'll go to a whole bunch that didn't, because that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I realized one of my personal highest esteemed CI guys, Mark Graben, lives about 30 miles from me. So I was like, I have to reach out and do something here. And I just worked up the courage, saw it a little bit, reached out. And he was like, yeah, let's grab a coffee. And I met the guy like the same week and we had an incredible time. And I'm like, damn it, I like him just as much in person as I do in all of his content. Yeah. <laughs> like the guy who he is has been on the internet for like since the internet started. And I just love him. Are you, are you familiar, Mr. Gray? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I've been on his pod and he's been on mine as well. So he's, uh, yeah. With, uh, yeah, yeah. He's a really nice guy. So it was absolutely great. And I'm like, this is the kind of thing, like, if you don't ask, you're never going to get, right? So in a short period of time in my life, I was single. I'm going to give you this risk that definitely didn't have its rewards. And uh, I'm on this app called Plenty of Fish we have here. I don't know if you have it there. But it's just I, a dating I believe app. so. I, I believe yeah. it's over here. Well. Some variety of that, if you don't. Some dating app where I'm like, you know, chatting up girls, seeing what we're going to do for dinner or whatever. And I get a lady's number. So now we're messaging on our numbers instead of the apps. And she's a nurse. She sends a picture from her in the hospital. And she's like, oh, you know, just a long day, whatever. And then she tells me, send a picture. And then, you know, we'll see about when we're going to get together or not. And I take a selfie, right? And that woman never messaged me again. <laughs> Oh, wow. Never. Not a hello, not a goodbye, nothing. Just, I sent her a picture. She never met me again. Oh. Uh, so um, wherever you are in this world, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I drop an F-bomb on this? On this of course podcast? you can. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I can. Yeah. Wherever you are in this world, Sarah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> dear, um, dear me. Dear that me. Broke, that, that broke my heart on the inside so bad, like. If you didn't have self-esteem problems before. 
Yeah. Wow. Well, thank, thank, thank you for being so open, though, Jake. <laughs> thank you for sharing your pains. Um, so, have you sent a picture to a woman uh, since that moment? I have. So I dated exactly. Well, you can't count that as a date, but you know, I've chatted up three women on the internet, and. Uh, one of them is the most hilarious date story of my life, and I got to tell it to you. And the second one, I ended up married. So, oh wow, yeah, go for the funny story. Out. Yeah, it worked out really well. And yeah. I actually shared if you dig through my profile, I have the first DM I sent to my now wife. It's the dumbest thing. So, her profile is empty except for there's three spots you have to fill out. And on the profile, it says "message me if," and she put she put "message me if you're a wizard." So I reached out to her. My opening DM was something like, we must both be wizards because do you feel this magic between us? Oh. <laughs> Woo! Oh. And, you know, we got married later. But the great story is right before her. I'm chatting up this lovely little blonde lady. Another Sarah, oddly enough. Too many Sarahs in this world. And uh, she wanted to go see the new Superman movie. I'm like, sure, why not? Let's absolutely go. You're probably going to catfish me and you know, not be anything like what you look like, but we're going to just have a good time, right? I get there. She's exactly what she looked like. There was no catfish catfishery involved. She was a little more nervous and reserved than I, we had in our conversations. And we go to the movies, sit down in the movie. We're having a good time. I asked if I can hold her hand in the most childlike way. I'm like 24 years old at this time. Why am I asking permission for this? But I, I, that's who I was. And she turns her head like far away, you know, we're in a dark theater for a good amount of time, like a solid like five minutes. So I'm like, what are you doing? And I reach out and I touch her on the shoulder and she flips back. This is like March. Okay. The timing matters. This is like March. She flips back and she has vampire fangs in her mouth and hisses at me like a cat. Like, and I was like, I was so paralyzed in that moment more than I had ever been by anything in my whole adult life. <laughs> and she said, can I bite you? Serenely, not ironically, not funny, not test the waters. This is the first impression I have of this human being. Wow. She's like, can I bite you? And so I was like, mm, I'm not against it, but do you want anything from the concession stand? And she was like, I'll take a popcorn. And I got in my car and I drove away and never talked to that woman again. <laughs> I oh, wow. left her at the movie theater, abandoned. Dear me, do you know any more Sarahs? <laughs> what? Do you know any more Sarahs? What do you mean? Um, so that was two stories about two different Sarahs, wasn't it? One that you took a picture of yourself and sent it, and one that you've just left in the cinema. Um, do you know any other Sarahs? Is this is this a Sarah thing? Or is it, a, is it just what? single uh, events hmm. that's a that's a that's a great question there's been a couple of fun ones in my life but i still am laden to the fact that you know when i took the risk you know sometimes you get the shit into the stick and you got to deal with it but most of the time you get rewards like, yeah you don't yeah. ask you don't get yeah who'd have thought when we started this conversation and we used the word seductive we would now actually be talking about dating and <laughs> um and jake's love life well, wow. you just got the whole thing, so there's nothing else left to give. Like, yeah, you got so, to, I'm married to the most recent one, and literally that DM is on LinkedIn. You can find it in my post history. I, I will look for that. I will look for that. So, um, you, you've had um, quite a life so far. How have you kept your hair? Oh, well, I am very lucky in that my father and my father's father, even in their old age, full head of brown hair, not going anywhere. Now, I'm going to get too personal here, but that's all the hair that I have. <laughs> oh, wow. What's on this face and up here, that's it. That's all so there is. We're quite the opposites then. From, from the eyebrows down, um, I, I have her. Um, I've seen you in the bath. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you in the bath. That's the <laughs> yeah. thing I'm most nervous about is if I get in the bath with you, like, it is it is just, you see this nice, bright skin tone? That's all there is all the way up and down. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Oh, oh no! I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to to the bath conversation, which will uh, which will follow this podcast episode at a point in time. Um, so, if you could, so you've spoke to a number of um, lean people. Um, in fact, actually, so you call yourself the funniest lean guy. Um, why lean? Why have you gravitated towards the L word? Is there a particular reason for that? 
That's so deep. Actually, if you were to ask me today, if, if I could make some other moniker like the funniest operational excellence guy work and not sound clunky, I probably would because there's some bad taste like around the specific lean stuff. But uh, regardless of tools, like the philosophy of, you know, putting other people first, uh, trying to grow the pie instead of take your slice in the most efficient way possible to move that needle forward daily. That's really what I was after conveying in the message. But yeah, people have taken some lean stuff and gone a weird direction with it. I don't even know where to engage. But I think I'm yeah. stuck with the funniest lean guy now because it's a moniker that works. It works. Yeah. It has reach. It's memorable. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely is. I, I, I think so. I work with a number of different lean teams and that a lot of uh, some of them have uh, are feeling the the negativity about the L word because it hasn't worked as they imagined when trying to deploy it or introduce it because it's being done not in in not the most engaging way and, and stuff so the L word is has been misinterpreted which has led to bad experiences with it which has led to people not liking it but um if you could change if you could come up with another name for it what would what would you call it i i don't know like I've been giving it a lot of thought. And in fact, about six months ago, I changed it for like one evening and somebody, one of my connections from India reached out and goes, no, you should definitely be the funniest lean guy. We like that. And yeah. that moved me so much. I'm like, all right, well, I'm holding on to it. Somebody directly told me because I was changing it like every other week just to see what got results. And that's just apparently what stuck. I would think through, I don't know, because I don't like Six Sigma for the same reasons. A lot of your problems aren't math problems in the real yep. world. You can show them as math problems, but a lot of problems aren't math problems. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know what I would do. Or I might just be just Jake and just le lose all the rest of it entirely. Yeah. So if you could, if you could start this lean movement again, what would you do differently to what happened originally? Well, I think in the original, like the origination in the like the dimmings and the Tai Chi owners in the world. I don't think they did anything wrong. I think they were very impactful. I think mid 80s, 90s, we failed to evolve it, to evolve it as business evolves and instead went, you have to be fundamental and appeal to the originators. If you don't say this in Japanese and pray to dimming three times a day, you're an apostle. You know, like <laughs> that's what we did wrong. I think it should continue to evolve and move forward. And Quite frankly, if we're talking about stuff from the 1960s, we failed to actually improve anything, haven't we? <laughs> like, right? By definition. Yeah, no. For, and it, it comes down to what you're saying earlier on. It's around the philosophy. It's a thinking thing as opposed to a, um, a, a set of, of prescriptive tools. And I think in the 80s and 90s, people thought it was that silver bullet prescriptive list of tools that if you do this followed by this followed by this followed by this, Da -da, everything's a lot better um but like you've just said it's about people um it's not about like the six sigma where it's not solving mass you can you can demonstrate it with a uh, with 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 numbers um but fundamentally it's about people which brings us back to your seductive part at the start it's all what i found is it's all about building desire in people if somebody wants something bad enough and we've been on quite a journey of, of you wanting things bad enough from your dating history to your careers um, in, in the last half an hour. But if somebody has that desire, then it's got a greater chance of success. And what we don't do, we, 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 we don't build enough desire in people. We're not seductive enough and make them want it as much as, 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 as they should want it. The reasons for it aren't there. How do you build desire in people? Uh, well, and the thing the thing you have to come to terms with as humans, we're tribal by nature. Like we're all, all at all times in all varieties, searching for an in group and attacking an out group of some sort. Like that's just who we are as humans because it's who we've been for a hundred thousand years, right? So the first thing is just make it as easy to be in the in group. You know, when you're starting a process, program, leading a team, as possible, right? And then define it really well and, you know, emotionally convict people into this is what success looks like. And one of my favorite things is, especially in operations, is gamifying outcomes, right? If I can just take how many units of X or Y we need to produce, put it on a scoreboard, 
and like emotionally convict the team over we're going to win or lose together. And then when we win, take a picture at the scoreboard, celebrate the living shit out of it. Like people love that. Humans live for that. Literally why we go home and sit on the couch on Sundays and watch our favorite sports game, football or football, depending on which country you're listening yeah. in. From. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they do that because we like to be, we like to feel like we're the in group, right? Like we like to feel we're one of those team members yelling and screaming to win the game or whatever. Yeah. So if you just bring that to work, it works really, really freaking well. Fair dues. Yeah, no, completely see that. See that. I think yeah, we are competitive by net and it's about creating that feeling inside. And some people are more a lot of people are motivated by the by by that and doing and doing good with that. Oh no, really good. Really, if you could have one person, so you are this master connector. Um, the, the, the person that wants to, to share and connect the, the lean thing, the OPEX stuff. If you could pick one person that you haven't yet spoken to from the community, who would that one person be? Apart from me, you know, we've spoken, obviously. Yeah, you were on the list. You were like the last big takedown. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed in the last two weeks, but I used the LinkedIn bell feature. So you post, I see it. I know immediately. Yeah. And I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm coming for you yeah. immediately. You've seduced <laughs> me. That, that's a that's a great question because at first it was Baba Miliani, boom, in the bucket. Uh, it was Mark Graben, boom, in the bucket. It was Karen Martin, boom, in the bucket. So now, like, I just got to get bigger goals and no more people. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's been somebody that I'm like, I really, really want to interact with this person that I haven't gotten the chance to. Yeah, got you. Because you, you just go out and do it. You push that risk. You push that boundary. And what's the worst that can happen. No, I love oh, that. We get it out. We get it out right now. There is one guy that's on my current radar. I've oh, already messaged him, but we haven't set it up. His name is Peter Masana, and he's the CEO at Search Spring, a, uh, a SaaS company in San Antonio. Now we've chatted a lot. We've had posts about each other. We've had DMs about each other, but we haven't done a thing, right? Like a podcast or a conversation or a LinkedIn live. So, so I just reached is, out about that the other day. What is the reason? Why? Why are you attracted to him? Uh, ooh, ooh. I, th I think it'd be weird if you just cut this part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah, this, said, this, uh, yeah. Why are you attractive to Peter? Oh, because <laughs> he's in good shape, nice hair. Yeah. You know, like, uh, no, he's, there's not a lot of CEOs that are being like social for a medium, you know, large scale company, right? And he just shares his daily, whatever actually happens in his world and his takes on it, right, wrong, or indifferent. He'll be the first to tell you, like, Literally what works for me won't work for you, but here's just what I'm doing. Here's the gut feel that I'm going with. And it's yeah. just kind of pretty authentically himself. And I've grown to appreciate that. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I love that. I, I, I often find like attracts like, doesn't it? And and I think the fact that we are talking is because is I resonate with a lot of what you do, why you, what you stand for and, and how you come across as well. And I think that's, and it is, it comes out to that. So, I mean, we, you, st you started by saying seductive is the word of the uh, of, of the day, and it, it completely is. It completely is. Um, so I often, in fact, I always ask people this as we as we're coming to the end of the conversation: is what are you having for your tea today? So tea is evening meal, dinner, um, not before you go to bed, but that last big meal. What are you having for? I literally have a tea in front of me. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so this is yeah, but meal. So this is this is where I go wrong with uh, when I talk to the Americans. So when I when I talk to anybody from America, and I say, "What are you having for your tea?" They they think because I'm English um, that that I mean drinking tea. Uh, I don't mean that. So tea for me is evening meal, um, dinner. What what well, do you fix call that? It? Tea is not a is not a meal. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just <laughs> fix yourself. It's Football all about is thrown. It's not kicked. And... Yeah, oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, so that's why it's called football. <laughs> but we, we can, we, we'll not get into that. We'll not get into that. <laughs> we have five minutes of argument. You know what yeah. you should have done? I don't know how good like your your cogni is from some of the parts, but I would have just loved if you asked me a question and I have no idea how to translate it. You're just like, well, what you want it out? You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, oh, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so go on, what are you eating tonight? Uh, well, it's morning for me. It's nine o'clock in the morning for me. Oh, it is, yeah. I think if the next thing I'm going to eat, it is going to be one of Jake's personal favorites. I do three things together, and this is why I'm forever a fat dude, that you're going to absolutely love and have to try once. So do you like garlic bread? Yes. Do you like grilled cheese? Yes. 
Do you like a bacon sandwich? Yes. I do them all together. Garlic bread, cheese, bacon, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese, bacon, garlic bread. Oh, yeah, I like and that. You're gonna, your cholesterol will go up two points just from hearing me describe the recipe to you. It's very simple, and it's three of like the greatest things you could slap together at once. Yeah, yeah, all in the same meal. Oh, no, I, I, I think I might like to try that. Uh, I might do that this weekend. That'd be, good. That'd be good. It's very simple, but please post about it if you do. Yeah, no, I will. I'll take a picture and show you. I will. I will. Um, I will show you my food. Um, so, Jake, if um, if people wanted to find out more about you, uh, where would they go? What would they do? What would they see? I am on LinkedIn 25-7. So, Jake Harrell, funniest lean guy, you will find me. You find a nice, beautiful picture of I decided to put on a suit and become a corporate world guy this year but I'm sitting with a pair of lady sunglasses on like this on my profile yeah. as yeah. the Lady Gaga of Lean. And uh, that is where you will find me notably first. Uh, second, we run a show called A Quality Podcast with my best friend in the world, John Thacker. It comes out every week. We're on YouTube and every other platform where they allow humans to talk. And so do reach out. Yeah, love that. Love that, Jack. I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to continue our conversations. It's been an absolute pleasure to get to chat with you today and the other couple of conversations that we've had and, and to learn, understand, and just see a lot of the a lot of the content. I don't think there's there's not enough people who who do what we do that have a laugh with it and enjoy it and have a little bit of fun. So honestly, um, from the second funniest from the self-proclaimed second funniest lean guy to the funniest lean guy, uh, I just want to say Thank you very much, Jake, and uh, have an amazing rest of your day. You know, I've crowned that title for myself, self-crowned. Nobody has ever argued it. No one has ever walked up and said, I'm the funny earth, you're a piece of... Nobody's argued it, so I think I'm just yeah. going to keep the crown for now. Yeah, no, and, and I've just bowed down to you and accepted that, that I am not... Yeah. Nobody put this crown on my head but me, and you're still bowing down. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh dear me! So no, so not not to myself. I, I need to I need to think about what I am number one at there now, uh, or whether I'm happy just staying as number two to Jake. And I think for today I will I will remain number two to Jake because that's not a bad place to be. So Jake, I just want to say thank you so much again for your time. Have an amazing rest of your day, and we'll chat soon. Look forward to it.